The verdict by the tribunal on the Deputy Chief Justice and the Vice President of the Supreme Court had been widely expected by Kenyans as it had, among other distinctions, the ability to render the Supreme Court one man less. Seventeen witnesses later, and having had two conflicting accounts of what had happened at the village market on the 31st of December 2011, the tribunal had finally reached its verdict. The conduct of the DCJ on 31st December 2011 at the village market Nairobi amounted to both gross misconduct and misbehavior. The tribunal said that it did not buy Baraza's story, that she had not pinched Kirubo's nose on that particular day and that she hadn't threatened her with a gun claiming she was not licensed to hold one. The tribunal insisted that something had troubled Kirubo and the nose pinching alone could not have done that. The only plausible explanation is what she said, that the DCJ brandished a pistol and threatened to shoot her. While pleased with Kerubo's account of events as it could easily be corroborated, the tribunal dismissed Baraza's evidence, especially that given by her driver that day, one Eric Omundi, and her bodyguard, Anne Kabiru. We find Obonde, Obondi to be an unabashed liar. As for Kaburu, we take her testimony with a pinch of salt. Other than the gross misconduct and misbehavior, Baraza was found to have contacted Kerubo when the inquiry was about to begin in a bid to have her recant her statement, especially on the gun incident. That and the potential of the incident to tarnish the name of the judiciary proved to be the last nails on Baraza's judiciary coffin. We are satisfied that the allegations have been proved and that we have no doubt in our mind that what, the, that what was alleged to have occurred did in fact occur. Baraza's fate, sealed as it may seem by the tribunal, now lies with the president. The president, who had earlier received the report from the tribunal, is bound by the constitution to implement its recommendations. Baraza, however, has a 10-day period in which to lodge an appeal to the Supreme Court. Baraza's troubles did not end there. The Kiruba family wants to pursue that matter further. The lesson to those in public offices and also in our private capacities is that we should conduct our affairs with the humility. They say the DPP should open criminal charges against her. For News at 8, I am Andrew Ochiang.